Hi, Joel from Bruno Co. here, and today is Military Monday. Um, here we have a Japanese Type 90 helmet, and this one's really cool because it was a veteran bring back, and he was a Marine from the 5th Division, and what he did is he ended up uh, painting some of the stuff on here um, about when he captured it at Iwo Jima, and uh, it really adds to the value of the helmet. On the inside, we have the name of the Japanese soldier who wore it, um, and it's also got its complete liner and chin strap, uh, which helps add to the value also. So uh, thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next Monday. Hi, Joel from Bruno & Co. here. Um, I am the director of the Historic Arms Military Department, and it is Military Monday. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, this Bowie knife that we have right here that will be coming up in the spring auction, Arms and Military Auction. Um, it's a crude American-made knife. You can see wooden uh, handle on it, uh, brass guard, leather scabbard with copper rivets. But one of the cool things about this knife is on the blade, it's marked Union and Liberty. So it was probably used during the Civil War. Um, but great, you know, just crude, locally made knife. Um, we've got a whole bunch more. We'll have a whole lot of other stuff coming up in the spring. Um, but uh, we'll talk to you uh, next Monday. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co, and today is Military Monday. And we're gonna talk briefly about uh, not overcleaning your items. Uh, we had a sword come in uh, this morning that someone had taken to a buffing wheel and completely ruined the value of the item, thinking that was the right thing to do. Well, it's not. And when you have an item that has some pat, some patina on it, some spotting on it, just leave it alone. Don't take it to the buffing wheel or steel wool it. Just leave it alone because it ruins the value. I'd rather see this on the blade than have it be bright and shiny and have the value destroyed. Thanks for listening. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. Um, today it's Military Monday and we're going to talk about a little bit about this Bowie knife right here. Uh, it's made by Shaw in Sheffield, England. It's got a great horse pommel on it and stag grip. Uh, Sheffield touch marks on the silver. Um, and it's got its original scabbard with German silver fittings on it. And this will be coming up at the next Bruno & Co. military auction with a, another great collection of Bowie knives. Look forward to uh, seeing you then. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. and today is Military Monday. And today we're going to talk about this cool newspaper article that was written in July 2nd, 1863. Actually printed July 4th, 1863 in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Now here we have um, an aged paper, looks, looks like it's the right age for 1863. It's on wallpaper because the Confederates ran out of newsprint so they're printing it on wallpaper. And let's go back over here. But is it real or not? So online the Library of Congress has done an extensive study of, of these and has come up with a list of what's wrong on the prints. Uh, the re reproductions. So this particular one, sadly, is a reprint probably done in the 1880s. Um, and it, like I said, it's got age, it looks great, but it's not right. Um, given that, the value of this is probably around $50. If it was real, uh, the value of the auction estimate would be in the $3,000 to $5,000 range. So this just goes to show you need to do your research before you spend any money on anything. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Monday. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. and today is Military Monday. And we have for you today this really cool Rev War era Germanic made bayonet. And it's not just your standard bayonet. Uh, those, those, the standard bayonets normally would have no markings on them or possibly a maker's mark that we don't know uh, who the maker was today. But this particular one has a wonderful US surcharge right at the base of the blade. Um, really cool piece coming up in the spring. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. Um, and today from Military Monday, we got this great Boston Silver Hilt small sword uh, made by William Cowell, probably around 1740-1750. Um, great, great hilt on it, nice patina, and the majority of the leather uh, covered wooden scabbard survives on it, minus the tip, but still a great, great sword. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. and from Military Mondays. I'm going to talk a little bit today in the blog about my some of my personal favorite things, one of which is my 1945 Willys Army Jeep. 
Um, so go to the blog and check it out. Hey, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. And last week I gave a lecture at the Concord Museum talking about uh, muskets of April 19th, 1775, uh, the lead up to the American Revolution and the first few days, if not months. And one of the things I didn't get a chance to get to were some of the great references that are out there for guns that were used during the period. First one is uh, Tom Grant Grinslade's Flintlock Fowler's book. A lot of great stuff in here in Fowler's that are being used. Fowling pieces around New England, uh, Massachusetts, Worcester County. Um, great reference. Um, let's stick with provincial first. Uh, French military small arms, um, sections from 1717 um, up through the model 1754. Um, great images in here and some great history. Pre-war weapons, Jim Mullins, of American Weapons of the French and Indian War of Sorts for Provincials. Another great reference book. Uh, Jim did a great job on that. Then we're going to go to the, some of the British. Dr. DeWitt Bailey, Small Arms of the British Forces in America. Um, really great information in here. And if you're looking for a basic book on British muskets, The Brown Best by Eric Goldstein and Stuart Mowbray. Wonderful book, great images, great descriptions, easy way to identify. See you next time. Thanks. Hey, it's Joel at Bruno & Co. And for Military Monday, we're going to talk about a powder horn. Um, but it's not a good powder horn. This is a bad one. Um, it was probably made in the early 20th century, maybe mid 20th century. Um, it's carved okay as far as the, the carving of the uh, map and villages, uh, windmills and stuff. But the shape of the horn, the form of the horn is completely wrong. And it's been stained to make it look older. Uh, the plug is wrong. Um, these uh, copper tacks that hold the plug in um, shouldn't be there. And there's some god-awful carving here at the spout. Um, so take a look at the horn. And next week we're going to show you what a real one looks like. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel Bruno and Co. And uh, today we're going to talk about a really good powder horn. Last week we talked about one that wasn't so good. Um, this particular powder horn was carried by Eli Kimball. Um, Eli Kimball was born in Bradford, Massachusetts in 1759, and sometime before 1775 he moved to Amherst, New Hampshire. Um, he was um, in the militia in 1776 carrying this horn, and on the side right here, you can see where it's marked, or it's carved, and it says Eli Kimball, his horn made it Mount Independence, on October 30, 1776, about the time of General Arnold's defeat on Lake Champlain. Uh, General Arnold was defeated at Valcor Bay and then at what now called, what's now called Arnold's Bay, uh, where he scuttled the last of his fleet. Eli Kimball had that event carved on his horn probably about a week or two later. But it's a great horn, got some simple carvings and um, inscribed lines and a fish. Um, cool pine plug, got some nice wear to it, nice age. Uh, but just a really cool identified horn. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel for Known Co. And for Military Monday today, we're going to talk a little bit more about powder horns. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about a bad horn. This one. And then last week, we talked about a good one. This one here. And I've got a couple of references here, which are great. I use them all the time. First one is Drums of Beating, Trumpet Sounding by Bill Guffman, the late Bill Guffman. Fantastic book, um, great reference, all different carvers, um, ways to figure out, you know, possibly who the carver was of your horn. And another one, uh, Powder Horns, Documents of History by Tom Grinslade, who also wrote a great Fowler book that we talked about about a month ago. Uh, this is another great one, uh, up to date, uh, great images, um, great one to have in your library. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. And for Military Mondays, we're talking about Bowie knives. And we have this great one here made by Blofeld in London. Uh, really nice blade, German silver fittings, rosewood grip, uh, leather scabbard with German silver fittings on it also. And we got a bunch more coming up in the spring auction. Um, so come back and check us out. Thanks for watching.